probably the first thing to think about is the fact that we went into lockdown and I'm not entirely sure if there was the the Hillhead 40, 40, 1440 coaching group before that or if that was a bit of a catalyst just to keep um, things going but why what what was the catalyst for creating it I suppose? Yeah I suppose that um, the wee bit of lockdown giving us the opportunity to bring the guys together. I mean, we've done coaches sessions before. So, you know, a, a pre-season, um, you know, make a presentation to the juniors coaches or some of the, you know, men's or women's coaches about various topics. But um, for me, lockdown gave that opportunity to say, well, people have a bit more time on their hands. You know, we don't have our usual Thursday night, Tuesday night, Sunday training sessions etc uh, we were trying to do stuff um, to keep people engaged and really just came up with the idea speaking to Alan Meikle and another couple of the coaches well will we just try and have a sit down um, ponder some thoughts um, so yeah I think wasn't something that definitely lockdown caused to happen because yeah. there was stuff happening but um yeah i think the and obviously i was involved in a couple of community pr practice sessions that we'd had locally within the west anyway um so really just that sort of pull everyone together from within the club we've got a huge number of coaches within the club and we're fortunate that way so always knew that they were, we were going to have enough people on a call to make be able to have some level of discussion or debate or whatever. Yeah, that, that's cool. Thanks very much. Um, so n since there was a variety of different things that you did, have you got specific examples that you could share that kind of en engaged the group really well or ch maybe challenged or, or pr was presented? Yeah, I, mean, I think I mean, we've had various topics that we've looked at. The first session, we just talked about zonal defence. Um, as a topic that was, um, I suppose, a different structure that is, I suppose, slightly more prevalent within the men's game at the moment. Um, and just some ideas on what it looks like, what, what coaches might expect to see if oppositions are trying that tactic out. Um, ways that we might try and circumvent it if we're playing against it ways that we might try and implement it so that was our first session and the feedback from that was pretty positive positive. Um, and people I suppose got the hang of what we we're trying to do and then you know other topics begin began to spring up from that so I would say the session on video analysis then we're able to tap into um, Scottish Rugby we're doing a couple of webinars about video analysis in the club game and BJ Trevedi managed to get a place on one of those. So he went along to that and then brought that information back to us and the parts of it that he thought were relevant to uh, to Hillhead. Um, it actually ended up not as much a discussion about video analysis as how video analysis and feedback um, could then be bolted together um, and I think it, there was some really good discussion there. We we split up into some smaller groups and um, and and then fed back. Um, we then had uh, Finn Gillis, who's the uh, head coach of Heritage Rugby, along, um, and he talked a wee bit about club culture, which is obviously a quite trendy topic at the moment. Um, and again, some ideas of uh, how we as a club might try to, to develop where we are at the moment into um, something that's um, better for us moving forward. So good to have that external um, speaker coming in, meaning that um, I, you know I, I, I wasn't generating the topics or other people within the, the group weren't having to lead the discussions, etc. So yeah, it's been a whole range of different things. We've got a session this week that we're just calling systems of play. Um, not quite sure where it's going to go yet. Um, but yeah, it, it'll go where it needs to go, and, and I suppose that's the best part of it. That, that 
um, because of the different people who are on the call, then we'll have the opportunity to take it where we think it needs to go and that people get something useful out of it. Yeah, I, I was going to um, say, what it sounds like there's been quite a lot of different engagement and and you've got some, maybe some of the youth coaches as well as some of your, your senior coaches and um, and potentially, I, I think, was there a few coaches from other clubs within the West that engaged as well? So it's... Yeah, there was there was one or two, um, you know, people from from some of the other clubs uh, got to hear of it because they were either pals with someone who was coming along and they were, they were saying, oh, I'm going to this thing that, that Hell Head are running. And, it's, and again, you know, absolutely fine uh, to get people um, who aren't part of our inner circle, as it were. Actually, it's been pretty good to have some of those uh, external people along um, other people along, you know, different clubs are at different places within their journey and um, um, everyone's brought a different perspective to it. So that's great. Yeah, it, just, it just gives you quite a bit of um, variety, doesn't it, in, in the conversation. So I might have a, a quite a specific view to it, but ultimately somebody else in a um, maybe even a smaller club or, or even a bigger club would come with a, a variety of ideas and then you can work out what's what's useful to you in your situation in the group that you've got. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, the, the kind of next part is the whole, now that you've kind of done that and and obviously will continue to, to do it, um, what do you think has been the biggest impact for the club and, and the coaches and, and the group that have been engaging? Um, I suppose for me, it's just about that communication and that, opening those lines of communication, you know, and I, I wouldn't have said we were a club where that was necessarily a massive issue, but there's certainly an enhancement to what has gone on already, and I hope we can continue that. I think we've got some ideas around how we, for example, factor team captains into it in the future, um, because actually on match day, the team captains are, are essentially the, the coach of that particular team. Um, it's very, you know, we try and get some of the coaches out there to watch the, the, the fours, fives, sixes, sevens. It doesn't happen often enough. So um, the more that they can be engaged in things, then the better. Um, we don't want to be too prescriptive around, you know, this is the way that all our teams must play, et cetera, et cetera. But we certainly want to have some general principles, particularly for what we call our development teams. So teams where the, the bulk of the players are our youngsters coming through and we have you know, some pathway in place for them um, moving through the club towards the, the, the higher teams, et cetera. So there's a wee bit of that. Um, and I suppose we just need to wait and see how it then fits with other structures, um, other people wanting to go on, you know, Scottish Hockey GB coach education courses. What is it that we can gain from those and bring back to the group as a whole, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, lots lots to work on. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, last thing would just be, you, you've just mentioned that, that you've got another one coming up this week, but what would the hope of the future be with people going back onto the pitch more regularly and um, time and commitment maybe being quite different over over the next season, few seasons. Do, do you see it continuing and what might it look like? Yeah, I think I, I hate to use the blended learning type <laughs> um, scenario, but that, that's what I get. Um, fr from a work perspective all the time but I, I think there will be something along those lines you know I think there's very much still a, pl a place for that face to face um, you know and, and let's hope that we get to there fairly soon you know standing pitch side being on a pitch be being in the clubhouse or whatever and being able to uh, throw some ideas up on a whiteboard and talk them through etc to me possibly get some of the information across uh, more quickly um, and you know you can actually pick out that whether people are fully understanding exactly what you're meaning at that point but I think 
the you know the big thing that we have learned is that um, you know pulling people together on a video chat is an effective way of running something and is pretty time effective. You know, we, we can choose times when, um, you know, some of the coaches, the, the kids have gone to bed or whatever, and we're, we're only talking for three, three quarters of an hour. Um, now, we might have in the past spent that messaging each other back and forward. And actually, we can get a lot more people involved in the in the chat um, and hopefully come up with some pretty solid concept. So I think we will have a mixture of both. Um, I, say I don't see any reason that we would run out of topics. Yeah. Um, because there's always something happening. I think there's always a conversation to be had. And hopefully the guys um, are always thinking about now, well, what is the next learning opportunity for me? Whether that's listening to a podcast um, and, you know, then sharing it with the rest of the group. And we've done a, a, a fair amount of that, you know, small bits of podcasts and saying, um, here's something that, you know, that, that sounds really interesting. How would this work in our co in our situation, et cetera, et cetera? No, it's, yeah, it, it's one of those things that I think, um, I mean, obviously, some of the GB stuff went immediately online and the conversations have been amazing, but it's the it's the application bit now of having engaged maybe at the beginning of lockdown and only now just being able to put some of it into practice or have a go and then think it doesn't work in practice um, and whether they've forgotten it or, or changed it in their head as time's gone on. And so I think there's definitely a face-to-face -face on pitch bit that is really valuable but while we weren't able to do that being able to just put video calls together and um a bit like just you know the pre the kind of presentation type um from another sport is phenomenal to engage in a cross sport or discussions with good examples from other sports and all of those things are are, are good to just think about and and utilize as if you like no, absolutely. I think um, I think the challenge is because we are within our little hockey bubble. Yeah. You know, it's it, it's how do you find out that those other webinars and uh, you know whatnot are actually happening? I mean, the 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 access to the rugby one was really just you know from a work perspective. Um, I, I follow a couple of the rugby coaches that work for the university. And one of them retweeted something, and I was like, "Well, that was that. That looks interesting." And then looked at the time of it, and I was like, "Oh no, I, I can't go to that because it clashes with other stuff that I've got on." But you know, VJ was on furlough at that point, and I said to him, "This looks really interesting. You know, you know, get in touch with the guys at, at Scottish Rugby and, and and see if they'll let you let you join it." And obviously, they're they're delighted to have somebody else on, on their calls, etc. So. I think maybe that's the next phase of this for this whole change in the way that coach education and, and, and uh, those conversations are happening are how do we get that cross fertilization between the different sports and people um, knowing where and when those sessions are happening because I'm, I'm sure there's loads of rugby coaches or football coaches or you know, um, lacrosse coaches or whatever might be interested in some of the stuff that we are doing within hockey. Yeah, I, uh, during lockdown, I had a conversation with the the guys at squash and basketball to see if we could tie up um, specifically some of our, our talent coaches into uh, sessions that, that they were going to be doing um, or, or conversations that they were having as well. So th there's definitely a push at the moment to do a little bit more of that cross um, sharing, if you like, definitely. Absolutely, and and I think it's, it's, you know, obviously, each sport's at a different place, and um, and it, you know, for example, you know, the use of video technology within rugby, I would say, is you know maybe a couple of years ahead of where hockey is at the moment, and therefore, it, it was a really good topic for us to to listen to what they they're saying because of where they are in their own journey. Yeah. 